Warm greetings to you all, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dr. George Sabre Cordson, and today we're going to be discussing epigenetics. As we start, I'd like for you to think of two questions. The first one being, have you ever wondered how identical twins can end up suffering from different diseases even though they have the same DNA? Now, this question can be answered by epigenetics, which really helps us understand how our genes are able to interact with our environment. The second question is, have you ever wondered how a fertilized egg with a single genome gives rise to hundreds, maybe thousands of different cell types that are found in your embryo or even as you're an adult? This question again can be answered by epigenetics, which helps provide an extra layer of information in addition to genetics that is necessary for cell development. Now, epigenetics is basically on top of genetics. Epi being a, a Greek word, which means on top. So it is on top of genetics. These are chemical modifications of chromosomal DNA and all structures that change the pattern of gene expression without altering the DNA sequence. The main word or main thing to understand is that without altering the DNA sequence. Now, since your environment and behaviors such as diet, exercise can result in epigenetic changes, it is easy to see the connection between your genes and your environment, and it is what we study today. Now, to understand epigenetics, I will briefly explain how DNA is packaged inside the nucleus. Now, DNA exists as a double helix polymer. This double helix polymer wraps around histones from nucleosomes. And these nucleosomes condense into a chromatin fiber, which is later condensed to form a chromosome, which is what we usually see as a depiction of the X chromosome. Although this is usually very evident during metaphase. The next important concept to understand is gene expression. So your genes are the ones that carry instructions that are necessary to make protein, which direct the activities of the cells and the functions of the body. Your genes are found in your DNA. Now your DNA is transcribed or the information is changed from DNA to messenger RNA, this process is known as transcription. And then your messenger RNA is then used to form proteins and the process known as translation. Now, depending on your protein structure and the consistency of those proteins, this is what determines the structure and the function of your cells on a cellular level. Now, to give you a hypothetical example of understanding what is gene expression and how it's related to epigenetic modification, let's imagine or think of gene expression as a sentence constructed. A sentence contains letters and punctuation marks. And then let's imagine letters are representing your genetic code and your punctuation marks are representing epigenetic modifications. In the first sentence, it reads, I went grocery shopping yesterday, full stop. As you can see from the first space, from the first sentence, there is adequate spacing enough or good punctuation marks for us to be able to read the sentence properly. Now, imagining in this in the context of DNA, your gene needs to know where it's gonna start its transcription and where it's gonna stop its transcription. So this is basically what a clear sentence is. Compared to that is a sentence without any punctuation marks. And then basically for us, we can say the sentence is very difficult to understand or we can read the sentence, even though we, we, we have read it before, but it's, it's very difficult to read. Now, what your epigenetic modifications are basically doing is similar to this. They're basically telling your DNA machinery when or where to start transcription and where to stop transcription. So they are able to increase gene expression or decrease or inhibit gene expression. Now, there are three main epigenetic mechanisms that we know of today. First one being histone modification, 
which can be in the form of acetylation or methylation and others. And then there's DNA methylation and non-coding RNAs. All these epigenetic mechanisms result in turning off or on of transcription. And then if your transcription, depending on whether it's turned on and off, that is what's going to be able to control your gene expression. If you remember from the slide I showed you, which shows that your genes need to be transcribed to form your messenger RNA, which later will be lead, leading to the formation of proteins. Now, this is all I have for you today regarding epigenetics. I hope this helps you understand the topic more, more deeply. Thank you very much.